Initially, I wanted to write about how HMD, the licensee of the Nokia name, has been ruining Nokia's feature phone line by removing features that were common more than 15 years ago, and trying to pass that off as a selling point. But in my research for this video, I uncovered something even more interesting. Let's talk about the rebirth of the Nokia 3310, the impact it had on HMD, and how Nokia diminished the phone's capability with a software revision, one that has impacted every Nokia since. The Nokia 3310 needs no introduction if you're a tech nerd. Memed upon for being indestructible due to its modular design that transfers the impact of a drop to the detachable front and rear cover, and not to mention the popularity of the iconic Snake game, the phone was in a lot of people's minds. HMD capitalized on this by releasing an updated version of the 3310. And this phone blew up. It got a lot of media and press attention due to the millennials' favorite feature phone being brought back. And while the new design is more so of a homage than a replica, it really was quite sleek and unique compared to the candy bar phones that HMD and Microsoft were producing. Within the span of about 5 months, a 3G version of this phone was released, and another 5 months later, a Chinese-only 4G version was dropped too. The phone proved to be so popular that HMD kept producing updated versions of the most iconic phones. With these fun, flashy phones, HMD changed the marketing strategy, one that is reminiscent of pre-acquisition Nokia. Have the cheap feature phones for seniors, and for those looking for the cheapest way to make calls and texts, and have the slightly more upmarket feature phones for teenagers and young adults. And while back in 2012 every teenager wanted to go onto Facebook and Twitter, which is what the Nokia Asher line was made for, HMD is leaning more into the aspect of teenagers ditching smartphones. And of course, with how addicting smartphones can be, with unlimited things that you are able to do on them, many are looking to cut down the screen time. And a simple device like a feature phone is perfect for that, and the flashy looks are a big selling point. But for those that want to dish their smartphones, they shouldn't be subjected to Series 30+. Plus. Let's get to the point of this video. The Nokia 3310 2G and 3G run a completely different system on chip, which in turn means that they run different operating systems. The 2G phone features a skinned version of MediaTek's MAUI, a software platform running on top of Nucleus RTOS. And on the 3G phone, spread trums, Mocha RTOS is used, also skinned to look like the Nokia phones of the past. Between the 2G version and the initial version of the 3G phone, there weren't too many changes. There's a different sound font for the ringtones due to the different OS, and the 3G version features the iconic plop sound anytime you press a key, just like many of the generic no-name feature phones from AliExpress, since we are essentially running the same software as those. Fun fact, that sound is ripped directly from Windows 95 Plus. Anyway, here's the issue, something that seems to have confused many on the internet, asking the same question as me. How do you play Java games on the Nokia 3310? The Nokia 3310 was the last HMD font to feature the ability to run Java applets, but I'm not given the option to. And in fact, none of the built-in games look like they run on Java. Indeed, the Nokia 3310 3G had been revised at some point, sneakily taking away the Opera App Store and the ability to run Java games. Even the box has been updated to reflect this. So by the magic of buying two of them and spending six hours on trains and buses, let me show you the software differences between these two phones and take a look at all the games. Let's start with the Java phones. We first have Asphalt Nitro. This is the last Asphalt game on Java, based on a smartphone game from 2015. Surprisingly, the Java version has a copyright date of 2017, being released right around the same time as the 3310. What's even more surprising is the amount of people that have worked on this game. Most, if not all, of these games have been produced by Gameloft Southeast Asia. It's very similar in gameplay to Asphalt 6 Adrenaline, with the ability to smash into opponents, and the Nitro that requires you to press the Nitro button again at the yellow bar to get the perfect Nitro boost. You earn money based on drifts and crashing into opponents, but if you crash into too many, you will get a wanted level. The game also has a pretty good menu song. I believe it's loosely based on the one from the smartphone game. The game seemed quite fun, but most Asphalt games are. Next up is Real Football 2017. And oh boy, I haven't played FIFA since FIFA 05 as a 4 year old, and this brought me back. I have no idea which goalpost was mine, so I think I scored into my own. Yeah, I don't know what I'm doing. But I will say, this game doesn't control very well on the phone, since you can only press one button at a time, making it hard to control. The final two demo games are Little Big City 2 and Disney Magic Kingdom. The reason I'm bundling in both of these games is that because they are both city builder games. Little Big City 2 is vaguely like SimCity, though both games feel more like those fire management games that you get over on smartphones. In fact, when I saw the plus button next to the gems on Disney Magic Kingdom, and the fact that you can use gems to speed up tasks, I fully expect the microtransactions. But I guess Java wasn't advanced enough for that, thank goodness. And finally, we have Snake. Also developed by Gameloft, this version of the game is fantastic. It was so fun, I ended up turning off my camera and playing it off screen. There are two game modes. One revolves around eating a set number of apples while avoiding obstacles, and your tail, within a certain time period. Each level has an increasing number of difficulty. Then, we also have survival mode, which has no obstacles, but there are grenades that blow up. This is the plain, simple, eat as many apples as you can without eating your own tail game mode, like from phones of the past. 
So that was a pretty good selection, right? Let's see what RTOS has to offer. Firstly, starting with Snake. This version of the game is called Snake Xenzia. It looks vaguely like the Java version, having the same graphics, but we are instead locked to a grid instead of free movement. The animation of the snake is also not smooth. Instead, it clicks into place. We only have the survival mode too, though you can change the levels to add more obstacles on screen. And I didn't see any bombs, but there are bonus red dots to make your score higher. Overall, this version, while looking the same, is far more basic. We don't even get the sweet music. Next up is Tetris. It sure is Tetris, and it's not very good, as it's hard to line up the blocks, and the movement is jerky, like was the case with Snake. So I can imagine it will get infuriating once you go up a few levels. There's Airstrike, which has a Gameloft copyright date of 2019, which helps us to understand when the software revision was released. It is the most basic version of Gallagher. Your ship shoots infinitely, so all you have to do is move from left to right and you'll clear all the aliens on screen. Absolutely no thrill with this one, and you'll be turning it off after a few seconds anyway, once you hear how badly the music loops. Next up is Natural Racing, which reminds me of Meditech's F1 race, except the cars are not coming towards you. Instead, you have to change lanes to dodge slower cars. It's incredibly boring and lacking in thrill. There's Sky Gift, which has you move your cards to line up with the gifts that are being dropped from the airplane. Gives me plug and play vibes. And finally is Ninja Up. It technically has the most premise, with you having to avoid ninja stars, but the game is incredibly cheap with the placement of those stars. Sometimes you can't avoid them. Not with how delayed the controls are. This game has nothing to do with Gameloft's game of the same name over on smartphones, which looks far more fun, although it has since been delisted. Funnily enough, other RTOS versions of the game exist, like on the Alcatel 10.16, which has the ninja stars move, which makes far more sense. No wonder I was struggling with the placement of the stars. They aren't supposed to be stationary. So to get back to my point, HMD has intentionally made their phones worse for a reason I don't quite understand. While I'm well aware that Java as a gaming platform is essentially dead, it's such a shame to see that there's no way to have a new device that can play the hundreds of thousands of these Java games. Sure, if you have an Android device, you can load up J2ME Loader, which has incredible compatibility. But if you are one of those people who are looking to dish your smartphone, why should you be subjected to these god-awful games that the Series 30 Plus has? Thank you so much for watching, and I hope to see you for the next one.